Hello, I'm Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the Spitfire Mark V's oil system. I shall give you extracts from the 1942 Air Ministry Manual and show relevant reworked colour AP diagrams. I hope you find this interesting. On early Spitfire 5 aircraft, the oil system obtains its supply from a tank of 7.55 gallon capacity, that's 5.8 gallons of oil and a 1.75 gallon airspace. The oil tank is carried beneath the engine mounting and attached by brackets. The tank is shaped to conform to the fairing of the engine cowling, the underside of the tank actually forming part of the fairing, as seen here. On later aircraft, the tank holds 8.5 gallons of oil and a 2.6 gallon airspace, and is the same as that used for the Tropical Spitfire installation. The supply is taken from the top rear of the tank, the connection being on the starboard side, and is led across the engine mounting to the top connection of the oil filter, mounted on a plate bracket attached to the mounting. From the bottom of the filter, the pipe leads to the oil pump at the bottom of the engine. The outlet from the engine on the starboard side is led across the fireproof bulkhead to the port side, where it passes through a main spar of the fuselage. After the spar, the pipe leads into the port plane and to the aft oil cooler mounted between ribs 3 and 4. From the aft cooler, the oil passes to the forward cooler and then inboard to the fuselage spar through which it passes on the outboard side of the supply connection. The pipe then leads forwards between the engine to the inlet connection at the top starboard side of the oil tank. The coolers are fitted with bypass valves to prevent cold oil passing through the honeycomb thus ensuring rapid warming up. To help easy starting after the aircraft has been standing overnight, a Worth oil dilution system is fitted. A solenoid valve operated by an electrical switch in the cockpit is mounted on the port engine mounting member adjacent to the engine fuel pump. Pipes connect the valve to the engine fuel pump and also to the oil pipe from the filter to the engine. A vent pipe from the oil tank near the return connection leads aft to the rear of the engine where it is joined by the oil drain from the oil separator of the vacuum system and is vented into the engine crankcase. The two oil coolers are mounted in tandem in the underside of the port plane and are secured in their cradle by three straps lined with langite. The straps are attached to the cradle, which consists of three bearers connected by two bearer tubes, the ends of the tubes being attached to lugs on the main plane ribs. Each cooler has a drain plug in the bottom, and each contains a bypass valve. The coolers and cradle can be removed from or assembled to the plane as a single unit. Access to the pipe connections on the oil coolers is obtained by removing the fairing which encloses the coolers, but small doors in the fairing provides access to the drain plugs. The oil tank filler plug is situated on the port side, and its position determines the correct level of oil in the tank with the aircraft in the tail down position. The interior of the tank is fitted with baffles to ensure good mixing of the hot return oil from the engine with the rest of the oil in the tank. A drain plug is provided at the bottom rear corner of the tank. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. We'll be covering the Rolls-Royce Merlin 45 engine in another in-depth video soon. 
please click the free subscribe button below and click the bell to get notifications when future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.